Oh, sick. Hey, yo, box. I never really, really thought about how, how deep this all is. Imagine being taught by a man who was taught by, stood by and walked by. God in the flesh, no, I'm saying. Looked him in his face, no, I'm saying. Greeted him, embraced him, talked and conversated, you know what I'm saying? Shared the same space we talking. You and God in person discussing Quranic verses. What the black man's worth is diameter of the earth is. Square mileage of the water and the land on the surface. Creating sun, moons, and stars. And how this whole universe is. At least but not last, the mastery of the serpent. History of the devil and levels of his disturbance. I mean, imagine if God mentored you himself in person. Gave you a job asking. You do it in his absence. Told you build the military. To move in disciplinary fashion How to build their mind and body with proper diet and fasting And gave curriculum to enroll the people in the classes And see through the devil's plans Like Judge Mathis' glasses Devils took our land away And we gotta take back it Would the people believe you? Or see you in a straight jacket After seeing you take nothing to make something like it was magic Would they disbelieve or dedicate themselves to it and baggage? Imagine being taught by a man who was taught by, stood by and walked by, God in the flesh, know what I'm saying? Looked him in his face, I'm saying? Greeted him, embraced, know what I'm saying? Talked and conversated, I mean, shared the same space, I'm saying? Taught by a man who learned a lot from God in person, and he saw the sad, you had the type of heart that felt concerned with poor people being oppressed by a government who aggressed, made us slaves to get the more, taught us that our worth is less than three-fifths of a human, like they could get away with no recourse for what it's doing, so the messenger of God pulled you in to join the Union and gave you jurisdiction over his army's recruitment. Original salute and soldiers all approving the work on self improvement. Stay from what you say, stay from and go where you say go. Long as we move. Welcome back for another message on behalf of Torchlight Interfaith Ministries. I am your brother, Brother Minister Michael Muhammad student of the master teacher trying to pass on the torch that was given to me to help me see my way back to God away from evil and into my true purpose and calling in life. I would like to thank you for taking your time to tune in to us today at whatever time or place or space you may be listening. We pray that our message today will somehow be worth your time, be worth your attention as you listen to what God has put on our heart to speak to you today from his word that we might grow in faith, grow in knowledge, grow in understanding. We begin always in the name of the one God, the God who is so beneficent, the God who is so merciful, the God who is eternal, who is the author of all life, the architect of all that exists, the God that predates Prophet Muhammad, predates Jesus, predates Moses, predates David and Solomon, predates Isaiah and Ezekiel predates all of the prophets all the way down to that first one styled in the Bible and the Quran as Adam, he predates all of his servants, the eternal God who is known and called who is prayed to, who is meditated about, who is, who is studied and read about, either in a book, either in the stars, or in the magnificence of this planet 
a God who is known by many, many names, many, many languages, many, many dialects, but a God who we cannot fit into our box. If I was raised in a tribal religion, then I want God to fit in the box of my tribe. If I was raised in a denomination, if I was raised in a sect, then I may want God to fit in the box of my denomination or my sect. If I was raised in a particular faith, then I want God to fit in the language and ways of my faith, but I want to say to you that we cannot fit God into our box. He won't wear the garments of my denomination. He's not confined to the costumes of my faith. He's not restricted to the rituals that I learned and I study and I practice. He is not limited to the prayers that I learned and the prostrations and the gyrations that I make. I'm talking about an eternal God that has made himself known by various ways that we would have no excuse not to seek him and find him through working on ourselves. A God who has always raised voices, he's always raised warners, he's always raised teachers, he's always found a man or a woman who he would speak speak into their ear by divine revelation and make their mouth say what they knew not to offer guidance and direction to the human family. A God who has never forsaken, never forsaken the righteous for the evil, even though he has permitted evil to have its time on the planet that time is fast coming to a close and he has always raised prophets, messengers, warners, sages, gurus, illuminated ones, wise ones. He's always sent angels and whatnot to help us through a terrible time on the planet. And as he has sent those kind of people to every people that have ever existed, listen to me, black man and woman in particular, you got to know that we don't have to look back 3,000 or 2,000 or 1,400 years ago for a a man or a woman like that. There are men and women like that in our midst who are directly from the hand, the spirit, the revelation, the power, the majesty, and the mind of God in our midst who are trying to speak to us, but a veil has been cast over our eyes. But I thank him for sending somebody to black people in America because we have been more dumbed down than any people in the annals of history. We've been more deceived and twisted and, and manipulated in the name of religion than any people in the annals of history. We've been robbed of our true understanding and relationship to the creator in truth more than any other people in the annals of history. And he has raised up men for us to grant us what he would have us to have and to know in this hour, in this day, and in this time. And so it is in the name of Almighty God that I say unto to you, peace be unto you. In the words of uh, language of the scriptures we know, the Aramaic language, the Hebrew language, 
In Hebrew, we would say Shalom Aleichem. In Aramaic or in Arabic, we would say Asalam Aleichem. In the tongue imposed upon us by our religious teachers, our religious masters, if you will, I would just simply say peace be unto you. Our message today, dear family, we pray that God will help us with this message and that we will be able to do it in a timely and effective manner to speak not only to your mind, but to speak to your heart and your spirit. So we pray that you will take your time and walk through this message and ask Almighty God to speak to you through the message. And so our message today is titled, The Man of Light. On last, our last message, we talked about falling in love with darkness. And so this time, we want to talk about the man of light. Who is the man of light? Did he live 2,000 years ago? Did he live 1,400 years ago? The world of religion gets so upset that there's a black man and black people today saying that God is a living God and that he's not dead. He didn't stop 1,400 years ago with Prophet Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, peace and blessings be upon him. He didn't stop with that historical Jesus 2,000 years ago. He has not stopped making himself known. He has not stopped reproducing his spirit and his mind in men for today's day because he has to keep his word. He has to fulfill his promises. And those promises are living and they must be brought in by living men and women. The man of light. I want to start by going to the book of John in the New Testament. Now, I know some of you don't like the New Testament. Some of you don't like the Bible at all, but just bear with me. Because even in poison, sometimes we make medicine from poison. Sometimes, as it is metaphorically stated in the New Testament, we have to find a way <laughs> to make water out of wine and wine out of water. The book of John, the 12th chapter, reads like this. The people answered him, talking about Jesus of 2,000 years ago. We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. How sayest thou, how sayest you, Jesus, the son of man must be lifted up? Then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not where he goes. While ye have light, believe in the light that ye might be children of the light. These things spake or spoke Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Who is this son of man that the New Testament says Jesus is saying needs to be lifted up. Who is this man that needs to be lifted up? 
Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light. Lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not where he goes. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus unto them and did hide himself from them. Have you ever gotten up in the middle of the night and tried to walk in dark? Even in your own house sometimes, it can be an unsettling feeling. Even in your own house sometimes, you can stub your toe or bump your knee or run into something that's an obstacle that's in front of you that you put there, but in the, the stupor of darkness, your, your path may, may uh, veer off to the left or the right and cause you a little trouble. And so if we look at ourselves as people, the people we are today, we have to ask ourselves, are we walking in the light or are we stumbling in darkness? Are we in the darkness of not knowing who we are as a people? Are we in the darkness of not knowing right from wrong? Are we in the darkness of religious confusion? Are we in the darkness of being lost? to the knowledge of ourselves and the proper knowledge and understanding of Almighty God. Are we a lost people? When you look at how we live, when you look at the quality of life in most of our neighborhoods and our community as black people, do we have neighborhoods, community, and family life that reflect a people who are in the light or a people who are in darkness? Yet, a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light. Do you have the light? How do I know I have the light? Because in the light, I can walk with a clear path. My sight is clear. My path is clear. And even though there may be obstacles and detours in my path, I can negotiate and navigate and operate in a path, in a way that is effective and productive and uh, provides for my safety and my ability to arrive at a proper destination when light is present. But without light, I'm confused. Without light, I'm being traumatized because I'm stumbling, I'm groping, I'm bumping into this, I'm co clashing with this, I'm colliding into that because there's so much hidden in the dark that without proper light, I cannot see. So when you look at our lives, black people, do we live a life of light? Or we, do we live a life that is a ball of confusion? Is it a, is it a ball of trauma? Is it a ball of, of, of agony and anger and sadness? Is it a ball of trouble all the time? So Jesus is saying, Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not where he goes. Look at the identity of black people in America. One day we're this, the next day we're that. We are imitators and emulators of a, the very people who have oppressed us and pressed us down. We have lost the way back to the values, to the mindset, to the way of life in principle that made us a righteous people. We are people walking in darkness where anything and everything goes. So Jesus is saying, while you have light, believe in the light, that ye may be children of the light. These things spake Jesus unto them and departed and did hide himself 
from the people he was talking to. How would a man speak about light and then hide himself? Knowing that in another place, he asked the question, what man or woman having a light would hide it under a bushel? He's saying, asking the question or inferring to us that if there's light there, why should we hide? So many of us know of the truth, but we hide what we know because we fear the consequences of the truth. We fear loss of money, loss of friendship, loss of wages, loss of status or position. We would rather hold on to those things and compromise the truth because we want to be a, a, a history maker. We want to be a, a, a shining star in a superficial way. We will compromise the light of truth for a superficial spotlight. So why is Jesus talking about light and then he seeks to hide himself? What's going on here in this narrative about Jesus? Who and what is the light that Jesus is talking about? And do you have it just because you read of him? Do you have it just because you go and sit in the pew or you're in the, 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 the choir stand or, or, or even in the pulpit or you on the usher board or you hold some post or some position in your house of worship, do you know whether or not you have all the light there is to get? What is light? And what is the darkness that Jesus is talking about? Is he talking about turning off the lights and we all light a candle and look at each other like at a concert? What kind of darkness is Jesus talking about? Do you know enough about yourself to know if you have light or are lost in darkness? How do you care for yourself? What is your relationship to your creator? And when I say your creator, I'm not talking about that creator out there. I'm talking about the creator in you that your body is the temple of the Lord. Do you have light or do you have darkness? Do you know enough about God Almighty to know for sure if you have the light or you're walking around breathing but in darkness with eyes but cannot see? What is light that Jesus is referring to? Well, I think we can all agree that on a very basic level, knowledge is light for the mind. Knowledge is not only light for the mind, but it's light for the spirit. But black people, we are a people who lack to this day, proper knowledge. So the book says, and we fit it perfectly, my people are destroyed for what? For the lack of knowledge. If I have a, if we have a lack of knowledge, then we cannot be possessors of full light or any light, some of us. So when you look at the demographics, about black people and our level of knowledge. All we have to do is look at our literacy. Look at what we're consuming and feeding to our minds. Look at our shows, our appetite for what we watch and what we listen to and what we talk about. Does it reflect light or does it reflect ignorance? It is said that when it comes to literacy, 
The national average in the United States of America is 34%. 34% on average of American people have proficiency in literacy, literacy, understanding words, understanding language. 34% in the so-called greatest country in the world, in the so-called leader of the free world, the average Amer the average rate of literacy is only about 34% of the people. Well, what about the other 66% uh, uh, of the people? The other 66% of the people are less than literate. And it breaks down that Asians of all people are almost 60% proficient in literacy. Whites are only 44% proficient in literacy. 44% of white Americans are proficient in literacy. So why is it that black people Black preachers, black teachers, black professors, black mothers and fathers, black artists and entertainers, black music makers, black culture makers defer to the standards, to the thinking, to the ideals, to the models of whites in America and allow them to dictate what is good and what is not good. If only 44%, less than half of whites in the United States of America by their own study of the American people are literate, proficient in literacy, what makes all of our elected officials believe that the way to do things, the way to govern, to the way to help people should come out of the minds of a people who, while they have a superior political and financial and social position, they act on power and position and not being the most intelligent or literate people even in the United States of America. Even Hispanics have a higher proficiency rate in literacy than whites. They're 54%. Think over this. These are not my numbers. You can do your own homework on the proficiency in literacy in the United States of America. Native Americans, 20% proficient. Black people, a little less around 15 to 18%, according to what I've read. How can we be people who are not proficient with language and words and our minds be governed by light? Because if I don't feel comfortable reading, if I don't feel comfortable pronouncing words, if I don't feel comfortable understanding words, if I don't have an appetite to read and feed my mind and illuminate my mind with quality, factual, credible information, then what am I living my life based upon? I am moving and feeling and I'm moving with my feelings because the light is out. And when the light is out and you got to get through a room, you feel your way through the room because there's no light to guide you. And so we are a people that in our relationships, in our lifestyle, in our communities, in our affairs, most of of us operate on feelings and not information. Therefore, it is indicative of a people whose mind is not lit with supreme wisdom. 
And so I go back to the book that I talked about in our previous message, entitled Brown Americans by Edwin R. Embry, that was printed in way back in 1946, where he tells the story of law against education for black people, where the laws of the United States, as many of us know, it was against the law for, for our ancestors to read when they were chattel property. But even after so-called legal emancipation, the law stood against us learning to read and master the English language. This man in his book with Edward R. Embry, titled Brown Americans, which was quoted by a man of light, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, this man quoted another white man whose name was Henry Berry as saying publicly on record while speaking in the Virginia House of Delegates in 1832 and describing the situation as it existed at the time in many parts of the South. He said to these political people, we as far as possible closed every avenue by which light, light may enter the slave's mind. If we could extinguish the capacity to see light, our work would be complete. They would then be on a level with the beasts of the field and we should be safe. What does this man, Henry Berry, know that we don't know? He's telling us something, dear family. He's saying, that as far, we as far as possible have closed every avenue by which light may enter the, the slave's mind. How do you close, how do you close off every avenue for light to enter the slave's mind? And what, what affects light in the mind of the human being? How do you illuminate a mind? He's saying, look, light comes in the mind through reading, through study, through observation, through hearing, through prayer and meditation. They did everything they could to corrupt our prayer, to corrupt our religious ritual, to corrupt our meditations, to corrupt our understandings of God and his prophets, to shut off our desire to read and to know. They did everything possible to cut off light entering the minds of our ancestors. And can you tell me today that it has changed? Sure, we had a lot of people come through the ranks of college with associate's degrees and, and bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and doctorate degrees and MBAs and whatnot. But what has it produced in terms of our own independence, our own self-sufficiency? Our educated people don't want to hear nothing about independence. Don't want to hear anything other than assimilating into the predominant culture of Euro-Americans. If this man is saying that if they could, they would shut off all light entering the minds of black people, then we would be on the level of the beasts of the field and whites would be safe. How are we living right now, dear family? What kind of lifestyle are we living? Is it full of debauchery? When we turn on the television, is it debauchery? When we listen to the music, are the lyrics debauchery? When we walk in the church, it's not just a fashion show anymore. It's freakishness going on in the church. It's debauchery coming out of the mouth of the religious. 
Look around at how we're living. Every avenue by which we could illuminate the mind, there are they, we're being fed and consuming that which will turn down the light of the mind. And so we are engaging in behaviors that nobody predicted 20 years ago. No, or very few people predicted 20 years ago. Our children, our grandchildren, and even some of their mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers are engaging in the most crude animalistic behavior and taking extreme pride in animalistic behavior. All of our women are twerking. All of our women want to reveal every part of their body. If it means they will get more likes, if it means they will get more followers, if it means they can endorse some product, if it means they will get more attention, the concept of modesty is gone from our community. The, 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 the concept of speaking with women and treating women with respect is totally removed almost from our community community because the avenues by which the mind might be illuminated have remained under the control of the same people who destroyed us 400 some odd years ago. So this man, Henry Barry, was on to something. So I ask you again, do you have the light? And what is light? Light, light. How do you have light in your mind? You can't stick a flashlight in there. You can't light a candle in there. You can't stick some device in there. You, I mean, you can, but you can't walk around with that. There, what purpose would sticking a physical light in your brain serve? It's not talking about some contraption, some mechanical light. Light, what is light? Light, a noun, is defined as a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Stimulates sight and make things visible. The room can be lit, but I cannot necessarily see that I'm surrounded by enemies and haters. Think over that. So the light we're talking about is not simply a mechanical light. Light is a noun and a verb. The verb to provide with light or lighting, illuminate. The room was lighted by a number of small lamps. It is also an adjective having a considerable or sufficient amount of natural light, not dark. Light. How do you see? Do you see? Do you see the world for what it is? Or do you think everybody should get along? Do you refuse, as I read today, of a Southern mayor whose name I will not speak, but I saw him posing in a picture with uh, sons of the Confederate flag behind him, a group of white racist lynching uh, white men he signed into effect in his town, in his city, a day to honor the sons of the Confederacy. And he's smiling, a deep, dark black man. Do you think he has light of the mind? What about you and me? Do you still call yourself a nigger? Is that the language of somebody with light in their mind? Do you still speak of yourself as a B-I-T-C-H? A H O or H O E? Is that something that would come out of the mouth of a woman or a man with light in their mind? 
think over these things. If you can see that something is wrong with a black man endorsing the Ku Klux Klan, why is it, how is it, you cannot see that you are on the same level when you endorse your enemy, your destroyer's language, which he has prescribed for us to use on ourselves to ensure that we live on the level of savages and animals. The man of light. We, as far as possible, close every avenue by which light may enter the mind or the slave's mind. Think over that. Why is it that every person, white or black or Asian, who would try to bring us light, try to cause us to help us to see more than debauchery and coonery and foolishness and laughter and giggling and silliness, it becomes a problem in this society? The man of light. Don't you know that the whole birth of the Western world was from the darkness of Europe? And don't you know that as soon as they could, Europe used religion, the name of God Almighty? Don't you know as soon as they could, white Arabs used religion, the name of Muhammad and Allah? to try to put out the light of the mind of the dark peoples of the planet? Don't you understand that the present world, the whole world of religion, the whole world of preachers and teachers, the overwhelming majority of us preach and teach from the darkness of a people who have used God's name for mass murder, mass rape, mass genocide to exploit the resources of the planet, to suck the life out of the soil, the grass, the trees, the bushes, the fruit and vegetation of the planet, the seas, rivers, and lakes, the, the sky, the clouds, everything they suck the life out of it, but they are allowed, we allow them to teach us what is light and what is dark. They, we allow them to dictate to us our understanding of God himself. Think over these things. They have built cities with magnificent lights. Cities of light. Oh, the city I'm in is so beautiful at nighttime with the lights. And if you ever fly over the cities, you see such magnificent organization and display of lights. But there are cities with great mechanical lights, but very little spiritual light. And so we're giving birth to people who don't mind lying, who don't mind cheating, who don't mind stealing, who don't mind stabbing people in the back, manipulating and conning people. What are we producing even though we're in cities of magnificent light? The light in the minds of the people is so dark. Every day we can read about how somebody murdered their own parents how somebody killed their own whole family, how somebody is doing some evil. And when we look at them in their picture or the videos of them, they look so innocent, they look so normal, they look so regular, and you just are baffled that that person who looks the way we see them based upon superficial life is, is capable of the things that they do. So mama's always on the news saying, not my baby, he couldn't have did that. Not my baby, he didn't do that. Not my baby, he's a good boy. Mama's light is out about her own seed. We are technologically advanced in barbarity. 
We have great mechanical lights, but very little true spiritual light. Every war is endorsed by religion. Every war and genocide is activated by religion. Think over this. We are in a culture now that has given us the ability to put ourselves in the light. Everybody has a spotlight now that's called Facebook or TikTok or Instagram and others. We, we all got our own little spotlight. We can all get now on YouTube and put ourselves, put the light on ourselves. But what, what are we shining? What are we need shining the light on? What are people really seeing? Is there anything there beyond your breasts, beyond your behind, beyond your legs? Is there anybody, is there anything there beyond your money or, or your jewelry or your cars or, 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 or some vain thing that you want people to be looking at your face all day, looking at your body all day? You got the spotlight, but what kind of light is it? And I know we love being in the light. But what effect is the light producing in society? We are in a time where everybody is in the spotlight, where everybody has become so vain, so self-centered, so narcissistic in their need for attention. What is the light doing to the character and spirit of the people? We want the light so bad that we make fools of ourselves. Now everything goes as long as you look at me, as long as I get so many views, I'll say and do anything for attention. But I have no character. I have no credibility. I have no stability. I have no light in my mind. When I open my mouth, it is always on the lowest level. It's always my rapping, brothers. It's always about murder and kill. You can't claim that you are Muslim and put up pictures of you making salat and saying prayers or going to church, but every rap song you produce, all the lyrics go right back to murder, kill, and death. Your mind is dark and you don't have the light. You got shine, but you don't have the light. Everybody wants to shine, even though our minds are dark. And some of us are so, so thirsty for a spotlight that we will do any and everything we can to block the light of other people. If we just think somebody's light not is shining brighter than ours, but it might just shine a little lighter than ours, we will block that person. Have you ever had somebody try to block your light? Have you ever tried to block somebody's light? Think over these things, dear family. The man of light. The man of light. Do I deserve the light? What will you see when you put me in the light? Does it look good on the outside, but it's nothing there on the inside? You're so busy worrying about your hair and your lashes and your nails and your jewelry and your fit, but you ain't doing a doggone thing to work on your heart and your spirit spirit and your mind and you you running out of stuff to sing and rap about because you won't read a book. You're afraid to speak the truth in your art because you want the light and you're afraid that you may lose light if you speak better. If you sing better, if you rap better, you don't want to take the risk. You want to keep putting darkness on the minds of people because the people in their ignorance are only used to eating garbage. So the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah is quoted as saying, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. 
that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Look at all or most of our entertainers. They're, they're giving you, they're giving you evil and calling it good. And you and I are consuming it as though we cannot get enough. They're giving us bitter for sweet and we're consuming it as though the light is out because the light is out. The Bible, the Old Testament, talks about, it gives us so much narrative about a people that Yahweh, Jehovah, chose to be a people of light. And it talks about the fact that God chose Moses and Aaron to be men of light. And God consecrated Aaron and established a royalty through Aaron of men who would be sanctified and consecrated to Almighty God and His Word that they might give light to the people. And so Aaron and his sons and brothers and children were made to consecrate themselves. And they were made to wear a garment to reflect and symbolize, symbolize their consecration to Almighty God, to be vessels and representatives and reminders of the light of God. And so the Levites, the, the ironic, ironic priesthood, pardon me, they were told to make a garment of gold, of blue, of purple, of scarlet, made out of fine linen. And this garment was given colors of blue and scarlet and gold. These colors represent so many things. But as we're talking about the man of light, that color blue, that Aaron, the brother of Moses, was made to wear, the blue was for the sin of the people. The blue is for the sin of the people. And we were taught by the master teacher that blue is a color of untruth. And so we are living in a time where the people are under the color blue. Now, now I, I don't want to get too metaphysical with this, but I want you to understand what's there in the word that can help us understand and see a little brighter. Blue is for sin according to the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus. But blue light is also the language of what we call the Masonic order. And when you come in to the Masonic order, you are brought through a ritual that puts you in darkness where you cannot see where you're going. You have to find your way. You, you have to go through something in the darkness. And when you cross over, you are now in the blue lodge. Why blue? Because it symbolizes a people who came to birth in darkness, without light, who began to civilize themselves according to the intervention of Almighty God through this man in the biblical and Quranic narrative that is called Moses with his brother 
Aaron, but in the beginning stages, they were still a savage people. They were dark by nature, not by complexion. They were dark by thoughts and spirit and not by tone of skin or color of hair or color of eye. They were dark soul people. So they are symbolized under this talk of blue light. Stay with me now. We don't want to be long. And you can take your time and pause this and come back if we're moving too fast and, and you need to digest what we're trying to say. See, blue light is the type of light on the spectrum of natural light that inhibits natural sleep. Blue light inhibits sleep where red light, infrared light, promotes sleep. Why is sleep relevant? Well, if blue light inhibits sleep, it is inhibiting the body and brain's natural ability to heal itself, to, to, to restore itself. And so the human brain, the human mind, when it is, when it is flooded with blue light, it is dysregulated. It becomes unnatural. Infrared light, the spectrum of sunlight in the infrared activates what we call melatonin. And melatonin is primarily associated with the pineal gland. Come on, stay with me now, dear family. Church folk, don't get lost. Moss folk, don't get lost. Infrared activates melatonin to sleep hormone. And melatonin is that thing, that thing that comes from the pineal gland that floods itself, distributes itself, not only in the bloodstream, but in, into the mitochondria of the cells, every living cell in the human being that allows the human being to, uh, it's our bodies to fight viruses, disease and illness and sickness and allows our body to adapt to the environment to the point that we can sub not only survive the environment, but master the environment and whatever comes our way in the environment. So these colors are similar in the biblical narrative to give us an understanding that you are talking about God trying to elevate a people from darkness into light. Oh, I hope you understand. Moses, according to the narrative, was raised in Egypt. And according to the scholars, They are now saying that Moses was probably a student of a man named Akhenaten. And Akhenaten was a pharaoh in ancient Egypt who is called the heretical pharaoh, the heretic pharaoh. Why is he called the heretic pharaoh? Because when Akhenaten came along, the Egyptians in their high science had fallen into a dark understanding of the wisdom that God blessed them with down to the point that they were not only articulating these uh, entities and phases of the divine supreme being uh, with various entities for, for, for to illuminate an understanding of how God works, they began to fall into idol worship. And so Akhenaten came along and he moved the holy cities. He moved against idol worship, 
polytheism and he established a faith that was predicated on the oneness of God. And he said to the Egyptians and to the world that the best symbol to understand God was the sun because the sun was the closest symbol to God himself. And the sunlight was the was was a a a great way to understand the power of God. And so Akhenaten taught the ma'at, the laws of morality and spirituality. And he connected the law to the light. And if God is light, Akhenaten was trying to illuminate the mind of the people to make them understand that God is one and you should not fall so far down in the names of God, the attributes of God, that you make these attributes God beside God. And so in the time of Jesus, the scholars are drawing a direct line from the priesthood of Akhenaten, from the time of Akhenaten and Musa or Moses directly to the religious community in Jesus's day known as the Essenes or the Qumran community. Stay with me, dear family. They're not going to teach this in the mosque or church. The Essenes, the Qumran community, call themselves the son of Zadok or Zadok. That means they that Zadok, the word meant the poor, the simple, the perfect, the sons of the dawn, the holy ones, and the sons of light. Akhenaten was the pharaoh of light. And when you look at the drapings of the Essene community and the early priesthood of the Jews in the time of Jesus and predating Jesus, their costumes and much of their rituals reflects the heritage of their some of their experiences in Egypt of the original followers of Moses. These Essenes, the Qumran community who were responsible for writing what is known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, writings and literature that the world of religion, uh, the houses of religion will, will only touch upon if at all, because if you get into the writings of the people who live at Qumran, the Essenes, in the time of Jesus, before Jesus, during Jesus, and a little after Jesus, it will upset the whole world of Christianity and some of the world of Islam. The Essenes were expecting the coming of what was called the Zadok, or a man who is to be a perfect copy of the creator himself. Think over that. They're looking for a man coming who would be a perfect reflection of the light of God, the man of light. The city of Akhenaten, Amarna in Egypt, was the first city of record that practiced baptism. It was considered the city of the sun, the city of God. This city, Amarna of Akhenaten, the heretical pharaoh who, who busted up polytheism, the same way it is said of Moses, the same, uh, pardon me, the same way it is said of Abraham. His city, they found, is on a perfect angle to coincide with the Qumran location where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. Think over this now. Bear with me. I, 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 want, you, I want you to think over these things now. 
because they are relevant to our understanding of Jesus. They're relevant to our understanding of Muhammad. They're relevant to the words of the Buddha. They're relevant to the, 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 the words of the, the Rab in the Baha'i faith. They're relevant to all the revealed religions of the planet. This is very, very critical. Qumran. It sounds alike. What, is, what, is, what does Qumran mean? Why does it sound so much Muslims like the word for the Muslim holy book, Quran? Qumran, Quran. Is there a connection? Q means in the Aramaic, Aramaic, Arabic, Language, pardon me, is cue to rise up, stand up, ra, kum, ra, kum, ran, ra, to call, proclaim, to read aloud, to summon, ra, in Egypt. Chen theology was the first God, the self-created God who created himself out of the murky waters of the universe. Qumran, to rise up, to stand up, to call, to proclaim, to read aloud, to summon. Well, the Quran means, it's a word that means to recite out loud proclaiming the one God and stand against polytheism. Qumran is connected to Quran. One community calling themselves Hebrews or Jews, the other calling themselves Muslims. But the connection is hidden in the garmentry, in the ritual, in the language. And if we don't understand it, we can't turn the light on to see the oneness of God. So Akhenaten proclaimed the one God and stood against the polytheists. The Quran is saying it is, it is identifying, it has been identified by the Muslim world as a book that is about standing up and reciting out loud words proclaiming the one God and standing against polytheism. And the community of Qumran were doing the same thing. The Essenes, the Qumran community, they were looking for a man coming at the right time at the end of the rule of evil people, a man they called the Zadik, who would be a perfect copy, they say, of the mind of the originator of the, hum of, the, uh, of, the, of the universe, pardon me. Think over that. Here's a people so deep in the word and the prophecies of the prophets uh, of Almighty God that they, they're expecting the coming of a man through the womb of a woman who would be a perfect copy of the mind of the originator of the heavens and the earth. Think over that. Who is this man of light? Who is the man of light? Does the light of God shine on time, on schedule, or can we change the time? Come on now. We're talking about the light of God. We're not talking about a light that I have on a, a, a dimmer in my house. We're not talking about this uh, ring light I use so that we can have a fairly decent quality uh, video presentation to you. We're talking about the light that is very near the center of our universe that was put there by the originator of the heavens and the earth. Does his light come on time? Is it ever late? What, what, what kind of light are we talking about? And if a man is coming who will be a perfect reflection of the mind of the originator of the heavens and the earth, the Zadok is coming. Is he going to come on time? or is it going to come early or is it coming late? 
Well, if he came 2,000 years ago, would he be early or would he be late or would he be on time? Was the world 2,000 years ago at the time of the life of the historical Jesus? Was society worse then than it is right now in 2020? Talk back to me. Was there more filth and more debauchery back in Jesus' day than there is today? Was there more war? Was there more killing? Was there more rape? Was there more virus? Was there more disease? Was there more destruction of the planet 2,000 years ago than there is right now? Have the people of the planet Stop suffering in the last 2,000 years or are they suffering more? Has the suffering intensified? Is the planet groaning and crying out for relief? Or is it getting better? How can we let a people with 34% proficiency <laughs> in uh, reading and comprehension of their own language dictate to us how we see, understand, and interpret the words of Almighty God. Don't you understand they're not qualified? Don't you understand that they're fighting to insert themselves in the natural order of things and the more they try, the more they understand that they don't fit into the natural order of things. And so they're straining their mind. Their, their clergy are straining their mind. Their religious people, their spiritual men, their scientists, their doctors of law and, and whatnot are straining their mind to bend what they're discovering about this, this, this universe of ours in a way that will fit them in. But the more they try to fit themselves in, the more archaeology and history and the sciences of the universe are letting them know that there's, there's, there's something in the darkness that they can't see or unwilling to acknowledge about their own place on this planet. And they're using religion to keep us dark and blind to this truth. Bear with me, I'll be finished by the grace of God very shortly. Think over these things that I'm saying. So the book of Isaiah says, the people that walked in darkness have seen what? A great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shine. Are you telling me? <laughs> that Jerusalem, that Judea, 2,000 years ago, was a greater valley of death than the United States of America has been, than the countries of Europe have been since the time of Jesus. Are you telling me that Judea, under the Roman Empire was, was, was more of a valley of the shadow of death than we are living in and had that our ancestors have been living in and were brought into over 400 years and the masses of even Europeans have suffered in the last 2,000 years. Is that what you're telling me? You, you, are you blind to the facts of history? Are you telling me that evil and darkness and debauchery has been uh, 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 weakened in the last 2,000 years or has it been perfected in the last 2,000 years? And if that is the case, would the Zadok, would the man of light make himself known 2,000 years early? Come on, think about what I'm saying. Would Jesus not know the time? Would God not know the time? Does he not know the timing of his own creation that he would send a savior 2,000 years ahead of time knowing that it would be people walking around in on this planet that need to see, feel, hear, touch a man that would lift them up and redeem them literally? 
of people who are totally lost in darkness, who are full of self-hatred, self-loathing, self-rejection, self-mutilation, self-destruction, who imitate, emulate, and idolize the people who are the enemies of everything that God said don't do, they tell us to do, and they've taught us to do, and they make it easy for us to everything that God tells us for our own good, don't do that, they make it readily available to us at a level that did not exist in Jesus' day of 2,000 years ago. Think over these things, dear family. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. The Essenes were not in darkness. The Qumran community was not in darkness. The Jews of 2,000 years ago were not in darkness. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, the book says, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Wait a minute. He didn't say it was there. He said it was at hand. In other words, there was some work that had to be done because we were. he was at the dawn of the coming of a new world order, the establishment of a kingdom of righteousness. He knew he was early and he was trying to prepare the people. So the Essene, the Qumran community were expecting the coming of this Zadok or a man, a man a man who would be a perfect, have the perfect replication of the creator himself. Think over that. Think over that. These are not my words. It's written in their predictions. It's written in their interpretations of a book that they, they took themselves out of society to study, to pray, to fast, to gain light, to gain wisdom, to gain understanding of the prophecies of all of the prophets of God. And this is what they saw coming, a man they call the perfect copy of the man, the mind of the creator. So if you haven't gone to those pains, keep your mouth shut. If you've allowed the theologians of the enemies of God to train you in your theology, keep your mouth shut. It's time to sit down and study and know that the man of light ha, has come on the scene. And I'm not talking about myself. So the book of Timothy says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This is the talk of the Essenes. They knew this so-called Zadok was coming. And some of them thought, a few of them thought, it was this one or that one. But now it's made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto uh, Paul is saying, I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher to the Gentiles. Now, I'm quoting this scripture because I want you to understand what we're talking about, this man of light. Jesus was a man of light, but he was not the man of light because he was 2,000 years early. He was a perfect reflection of what the man of light would be be like in character and principle, but he was not yet the man of light because his preaching and his teaching would not be able to outweigh the mind of Satan. Think over that. Even though Satan used his name to advance 
murder, and death, and darkness on the planet. But this man coming at the end of the rule of the enemy of God, he will abolish death. How can you abolish death when all mortal flesh eventually, eventually will cease to exist in our normal form? He will abolish death because he will bring a wisdom and a truth and a knowledge that will allow us to produce the kind of living that is eternal. He will allow us to sink our minds, our hearts, and our spirits with the light of God and become perfect reflections of God like himself. How do we have that now? Well, let's talk about the church. Let's talk about the mosque. Let's talk about the synagogue. What kind of life do we live under our costumes? What kind of politics is going on? What kind of hating is going on? What kind of manipulation is going on? What kind of slavery and slave masterism is going on in the world of religion? Are we a perfect reflection of the light of the original mind of God? You tell me, you're telling me there's no racism in Islam. Are you kidding me? But you honor and respect the royal families of the nations who walk around at this very moment with slaves. You, 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 you look up to the, 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 the royals of your nations, uh, your Islamic nations, even though they're dropping bombs on other Muslims, they're financing the insanity of terrorists to kill innocent, so-called innocent people. How can you tell me, because you have Islam, that you reflect the light of God? When you don't want no dark-skinned people having no say, it's beyond your comprehension that black people in America, that God would do anything for us that didn't come from you. Same with Christianity. You, you don't want to take down that white, pale image that you try to tell people is Jesus. That's not Jesus. You have us so programmed that we can't even, we'll talk about Jesus being black and put up a white image. Can't tell me that there's no death lifestyle in the world of religion. When we kill each other over position, we kill each other over title, we kill each other over money, we, we do all manner of evil to one another while we wearing the same costume, saying the same prayers, practicing the same rituals. We are power hungry. We want the spotlight. We don't know how to lift one another up where everybody is greedy to be the only one in the spotlight. We worried about who going to take our shit shine. We, we fall down in so deep into spiritual degradation that we can't even see ourselves. We look good on the outside, but deep down inside, we full of all kind of chicanery. We live a death lifestyle. We practice in homosexuality and lesbianism. Is that the light of God? Come on now, talk to me. Huh. So, in as I try to wrap this up, dear family, the Kabbalists have a book called the Zohar. And the Kabbalists talk about light. The Zohar is a word that means splendor or radiance, splendor, radiance, the splendor of God, the radiance of God, because God is light in this Jewish mysticism, which coincides with the Muslim holy book in the 24th chapter called Al-Nur, the light, 
where it reads, Allah is God, is the light of the heavens and the earth. A likeness of his light is as a pillar on which is a lamp. The lamp is in a glass. The glass is as it were a brightly shining star lit from a blessed olive tree and oil that's hard to burn out. Neither eastern nor western, the oil whereof gives light. Through fire, though fire touch it not, light upon light, Allah God hides his light to whom he pleases. Allah God sets forth parables for men, and Allah is the knower of all things. What oil is this? that can be lit without fire. It is the light, it is the oil of wisdom, the oil of the knowledge of God, the oil of the wisdom of God, the oil of the prophecies of God, the oil of the being of God that is in each of us that when we begin to feed the mind properly, the oil starts to light. And so the Moorish Americans, in their Quran, they have verses that read like this. An age has passed. The gate unto another, another age flies open at the touch of time. This is the preparation age of soul, the kingdom of Emmanuel, of Allah in man. And these, your sons, will be the first to tell the news and teach the gospel of goodwill to men and peace on earth. A mighty work is theirs, for carnal men want not the light. Carnal men want not the light. They love the dark. And when the light shines in the dark, they comprehend it not. We call these sons revealers of the light, but they must have the light before they can reveal the light. Now, some of us are born to be revealers of the light and we don't know it because Satan picks us off. Some of us, the light shines our way, but we can't understand people alike. You mean this man don't lie? You, man, you mean this man has no ill motive? You mean this man don't want no kickback? You mean this man don't want no side deal? You mean this man ain't going to sell me out or betray me? You mean this man is that kind of solid, upright person? I just person cannot be real. We got to be grimy. We got to be slick. We got to manipulate. We've got to undermine. We've got to sabotage. We've got to stab in the back. We've got to gossip about. We've got to dismantle this man's effect on the environment because he is a light and we don't, we don't understand this thing called light. So we're going to work. We're going to work to cover the light. So as we move to conclude this message, the man of light, what are the characteristics of a man of light? Honesty, integrity, humility, faithfulness, loyalty. These noble qualities, fearlessness. He is a warrior against the darkness. Are you light or are you darkness? Look at how you live. Look in the mirror. Look at your skin. Look at your eyes. Look at how you present yourself. Listen to how you speak. Look around at how you interact with your family, how you raise your family. Look at how your family is raising you. Look at how you enjoy yourself. What do you do for entertainment and fun? Are you darkness or are you light? Is alcohol darkness or light? Is cocaine darkness or light? Is lean darkness or light? Is orgies an orgy darkness or light? Is unnatural sexual proclivities darkness or light? Are you darkness or light? 
Are you so into your own image that you don't work? You, 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 you're so arrogant. You're so vain. You, 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 you even use God to, to shield your dirty religion because the only way you measure people is according to material possession and financial wealth. Otherwise, it's not real to you. Is that darkness or light? You only can relate to people who have possessions that you desire. And if they don't have a bunch of possessions, you can't even see them as a person person, even though they may be a person of light, that turns you off. Are you darkness or light? Have you ever looked in the light? I mean, have you ever looked directly at a bright light? It's blinding. It's blinding. The light can blind also. And you have to develop the ability to take the light. And so the sunlight rises slowly until we can stand at noonday and appreciate the light because when it really fully develops, we don't need to look directly in the light because the light of God has something in its spectrum that is feeding the cells of the human being and, uh, and is giving us the power of God within our own body to be the masters of our environment. So we have the image and likeness of God that we can subdue everything on this planet by the light of God. And we don't have to fall down to our lower nature. So the Buddha is quoted his last words are said to be, be your own light. Well, wait a minute. How can I be my own light? How can I be my own light? What kind of light does the messianic man, the messianic figure, this so-called in the words of those early time people, the Qumran community from the Dead Sea Scrolls, this Zadik that is coming, that will be a perfect reflection of the mind of the first originator of the heavens and the earth. What kind of light is he bringing? And what does that have to do with Buddha saying, be in your own light? Because we, in order, we will know that the man of light has touched our life because he will, he will, he will begin to illuminate our mind, all of our false beliefs, all of our false traditions, all of our rituals. We will be able to see through the ritual. We'll be able to see through the costume. We'll be able to see through the sect, see through the denomination, see through the label faith, see through these boxes and under understand that God is one and we'll be able to look in any circle or square and identify how they are connected and where God is at the center of it all and be able to shine light on all of these artificial barriers and constructs that we make in the name of God and show that God is the full spectrum light, that you cannot confine God to your church, your mosque, your temple, your synagogue, your cathedral. He's bigger than all of them put together. So when you begin to nurture God's word when you are touched by the man of light that's present in the world today. The man of light that's present in the world today, he will speak a word. He will do a work that will shake up the world and the world will fight this man to try to keep you from listening, seeing, feeling, and hearing this man because the light that he shines, it will, it will eclipse their light if you pause and listen and drink in his words. His words will eclipse the best light that the enemy of God have ever produced since their existence on the planet. He will come with a knowledge and a wisdom that you never heard, but you cannot defeat by any argument. If you see or feel or hear or touch this man of, of, of light, the man of light, he will set a light on in you. 
And when that light is set on of you, if you don't allow yourself to be tricked by your denomination, tricked by your label of your faith, tricked by your traditions and your rituals, if you don't allow yourself to be tricked by the box of religion that you're in when you hear this man of, of light, when you see the man of light, you will be able to become a light yourself in the world. Even in the box that you come up out of, people will hear something coming from you that they never heard from nobody else that came from that tradition. The man of light will be a perfect reflection of the mind of the creator because he's bringing in a new creation that will take time to manifest. But if you stand back and look at the prophecies of God, look at what's going on in, the, in nature, look at what's going on in the universe, look at what's going on with the governments of the world, you will begin to see that a mighty change is taking place in every living thing on this planet. I'm here to tell you that I am so grateful to Almighty God, so thankful to be a student of the man of light. So I leave you with this question. Do you want light or do you want darkness? I don't know about you, but I want light. I want light. I want to activate my melanin. I want to activate the receptors in me that allow me to receive the light and empower my health, empower my vitality to destroy death in my physical self, my spiritual self, my mental self, my emotional self. I want to keep growing in the light of that one, that man of light who is a perfect reflection of the mind of the creator. And so I leave you with these verses from the second chapter or uh, Samuel 2, the 22nd chapter. And the afflicted people thou wilt save, but thine eyes are upon the haughty that thou mayest bring them down. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will light my way. He will enlighten my darkness. For by thee, I have run through a troop by my God. I have leaped over a wall. I run through a troop of dark people. I leap over the traps and the machinations and the plots and schemes of the enemy to keep me from feeding on the light and reflecting the light. Because the more I feed, the more power I receive, more spiritual power I receive. And so I'm saying to you, dear family, as we close this message, the man of light is present. He may not look like what you're looking for. He probably doesn't sound like what you expect. He's not future. He's not little Dirk. He's not Jay-Z. He's not any of these illuminaries of the entertainment world. He's not Tyler Perry. He's not most of the preachers on this planet. He's not the Pope of Rome. He's a little black man whom God has raised up and prepared to be a perfect reflection, a perfect reflection of his mind and his spirit because God wants to save us and the afflicted people thou will save and the haughty people he's bringing down. Can't you see a world falling down? Can't you feel trouble on the horizon when you look over there in the east and what's going on in the east? Don't you see how evil people are bringing themselves down with the slaughter of 
so-called innocent people. Don't you understand what is going on and how it lines up with the Bible, the Quran, and the predictions of most of the revealed words of Almighty God? Don't you see that 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 God is working a work? He wants to He wants to bring up the people of light and sit down the people who have spread darkness all over this planet. I pray that Almighty God will grant you the light of understanding and inspire you. Don't run from the light. Come on toward the light. Come on toward the light because the man of light is on the scene and he needs you. He needs you to come on into the light so that you can become a person of light yourself. And like the Buddha said, be a light yourself. I thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time. And I pray that you have got something to think about from this message we have offered to you uh, today. And if you would like to know more, drop us a line on our email or in the comment section of this uh, video. We would love to hear from you. We would love to engage with you as we prepare ourselves to uh, 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 move forward in our mission and our calling. We would like to share with you what has been shared with us. I pray that God will bless you. May Almighty God be with you. I leave you as I came before you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum, shalom alaikum, and peace be unto